In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use sound waves and create sound cue files from them inside UV5 so you can have sound effects inside your environment. We'll cover how to do individual sounds that are coming from a specific source and having a sound that's an ambient sound on a loop, such as environment background noise. So let's get into it. In the previous tutorial, we covered how to get, edit, export, and then import custom WAV files from Audacity into UE5. And at the end of that tutorial, we already created two different files. One is an individual sound of a telephone ring and a background ambient sound of a room tone. So we already imported these. So if you wanna see the tutorial of that entire process, make sure you watch the previous tutorial on doing this using Audacity and then exporting it and then importing it into UE5. So I already imported these two sounds into UE5. Both of these are WAV files. And let me go ahead and play them so you know what they are. So we're gonna use two different sounds to set this up inside UE5. One is an individual sound of a telephone ring. And the other one is background noise ambient for a room tone. So when you're dealing with sound inside UE5, you're gonna be dealing with two different types of files. A sound wave file, the file that you imported, and a sound cue file, which is an actor inside UE5 that controls different options and parameters for using these wave files. And by default, once you imported a wave file, you have an actor that you could actually use inside your level as is, although it's not recommended. It's better to set up a sound cue file so you have more control over it. But just as we have it right here, you could take any of these sounds and just drag them inside your level and you could use them as they are right now. So let's go ahead and drag this telephone ring right inside the level and it will work by simply left click hold and drag right inside your level. Now you're not gonna be able to hear anything unless you spawn into the map. So I'm not gonna spawn and try to walk around inside the map to hear it. Uh, you can enable ability to hear sounds right inside the editor from the viewport by coming up into the settings and then enabling volume right here. And you also have, and then you're gonna start he hear it ring. And you, you also have a volume a control to how much of that sound you will hear from the editor. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable it. It will start playing the telephone ring sound. Let me go ahead and uh, delete it from the level for a moment so it doesn't play. So as soon as you insert a sound, a sound wave file into your level, it will begin to get activated. You will begin to hear it and that sound will begin to play. Now there are a couple of downsides to doing this because a sound wave file is an individual file and you have very limited options and control over it, but you do have some options. So first is when the sound is inserted into the map, let me disable the sound for a second. You will hear the sound everywhere. It will play from the source right here in the entire map. It doesn't matter where I am inside the map, you will hear the sound. So I can be far away. It will still play. And it will also play only once, running through. Let me turn this off. It will uh, run through its cycle of about a minute. That's what we edited down to. It's a one minute WAV file. And once it's done, it will no longer loop. So it'll play once and be over with. And maybe this is gonna be good for an individual sound that's coming from a location just, such as this telephone ring, but that's not going to be ideal for, let's say a room tone that needs to be played on continuous loop forever within a specific area. Now we do have controls and the first set of controls for a sound wave file are going to be inside of the, uh, the file itself. By double clicking on it, you can open up a sound wave editor. So let's go ahead and double click on the telephone ring. This will give you some controls to adjust for the sound wave file. So you have looping, you can go ahead and enable loop. This will play on forever. You can adjust volume, you can adjust the pitch and a bunch of other controls and parameters and settings for this file. Now we're not gonna cover these here, uh, but you could enable them. Like I said, again, you can just use the sound wave file as is. I just wanna cover a few of these basic pro uh, properties first before we create a sound cue file. So I'm not gonna adjust anything here. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out. The other set of controls you have is inside the details panel for the selected sound wave file. So if you select that sound wave file inside the level and take a look at the details panel, you have controls here, uh, a little bit more controls. You don't have looping, but you have other controls to adjust how the sound will play. 
So a few of them are, you can adjust, of course, the volume, the pitch multiplier. This will only apply to this specific sound inserted into the level. Then a little further down, you have ability to uh, control spatialization. This is a 3D sound effect that's coming from the sound. So it'll act, essentially act like uh, it, it's gonna come from the source, right from the actor itself. So this is perfect for sound effects that have a specific location, such as the telephone ring. It has to come from a, you know, from a phone. So let me go ahead and just move it a little closer to, to the phone. I have a prop here that uh, that's used inside the retro office course that you get, you get access to all these static meshes to use to create the environment with uh, inside a brand new course that I released, the UEFI Retro Office project. So if you're interested, you can get that course now and all these uh, different static meshes and props to create the environment with. So I'm gonna position this sound right here and this is where it's gonna come from uh, as long as I define and control allow specialization. So actually this control right here, uh, it's enabled. And if I scroll down a little further inside the properties, there'll be another control for uh, to override and control the specific properties for that specialization. But before we get to that, I can also enable override attenuation. This property right here will play sound uh, with a cone of influence. So let me go ahead and enable this. And as soon as I do, you can see that we have a sphere of influence where the sound will get played from it'll have an inner cone. This is where the sound is going to get played at 100% volume. And then it has a fall off. And in order to see that fall off, let me go into top view. And it has a fall off effect, very large. But essentially, the further you are away from the center, it's going to get faded out until you leave this sphere of influence, and it's no longer going to play. So this property is going to be very important for us, not just for this sound wave file control, but when we get into the sound cue. And then you can control your inner radius, which is where the sound is going to come from. And then of course, the fade out, the fall off distance. So now let me go ahead and go into that sound. And if I enable the volume, once I start to leave, it's going to start get faded out until I no longer hear if I leave this area of influence, uh, you won't hear it. And then we have specialization, which is control right down here. So once you've enabled, let me turn this off. I'll turn that back on in a second. So once you've enabled attenuation, you can then enable and control specialization. It will have a 3D source effect. So if you turn your head, you'll be able to hear it in the left ear and in the right ear, depending on how the player is faced to that source of sound. So let me go ahead and turn this on. So if I turn my head to the left, I can hear it in my left ear, and now I can hear it in my right. If you don't want this effect, you just disable it. Enable specialization, just disable it. And you'll be able to hear it from both ears equally, which is not very natural for sound effects. So those are the two main properties that you need to know about when you're dealing with sounds, whether it's a sound wave file or what we are now going to cover and what you should be using is a sound cue file. So let me go ahead and uh, turn the sound off. So we're not going to be able to hear it. So you do not generally want to, you could, like I said, you could use this, but you generally do not want to use a sound wave file inside your level because there's a much more powerful actor inside UE5 that gives you control over that sound as well as combining different sounds together and allows you to control all the properties we briefly covered to greater extent and that is a sound cue file. So let me go ahead and take this file and delete it. And we need to create a new actor and then use these sound wave files inside that actor and control all the properties within that. So we need a sound cue file. To create a sound cue file, we simply right click inside the content browser, go to audio and create a sound cue file and then name it. I'm gonna keep the name as sound cue. Then I'm gonna give it an underscore and give a name which is gonna be telephone. And let me get rid of the new. So now we have an empty container where we'll be able to import or not import, but bring in add this telephone sound wave file. So let's go ahead and open up the sound cue file and take a look at some of the properties here. So here you have a sound editor. 
where you can mix different sounds together, different sound wave files. You can control their pitch, you can control their volume, in addition to uh, many other effects that you can kind of modulate between in order to combine different sounds and control their output. So this is a far more powerful way of mixing sounds, whether it's an individual sound wave file or multiple, for the final result. We're just going to use a single sound wave file, our telephone ring. And we're not going to control many of the properties here, but on the right-hand side right here, you have different nodes where you can just delay, fade, oscillate, modulate, mix, and so on. So let's just bring in that single individual telephone ring sound right in here and uh, adjust a few properties. Let me make this smaller. And in order to bring a sound that we want to use, just take the sound, the sound wave file, left click, hold and drag, and just drop it right in here. And all we're going to do is just take the output and connect it. So we're going to take the sound wave file. So it's just going to be an individual sound. And this is our output. This is the final result of this telephone ringing. If I left click on the sound itself, we'll uh, bring up properties for it. And here is where you can adjust the looping property for this sound. So let's go ahead and select it. And we do want to have it on forever loop, but you have control. If you wanted to have it on the loop or you wanted to play it once and just be done with it, you can adjust it here. So let's go ahead and loop it. So this phone is going to ring forever and I'm going to enable looping. And then for the output, if you select the output, you have properties for volume. You can override the attenuation here. We're actually going to control attenuation, the source of the sound and where it's coming from, from the details panel, like we did for the sound wave file and not from here, but you can adjust it here as well. And then we have a few other properties. We're going to leave them alone. So that's all we're going to do. If you need to uh, uh, listen to the sound and what it sounds like, let's say you've added a few other properties here. Uh, this is how you would add different sound nodes in order to mix different sounds together or just adjust the sound that you have by simply left click, hold and drag, and then reconnect it to the final output. So you can kind of mess around, just drag any of these different nodes and uh, mess around with them to see what kind of uh, different modulation and different mixes you can create of an individual sound or multiple sounds. And in order to hear your final output, you can play right from here, play cue. And this will just simply play the sound and whatever uh, nodes you've inserted in order to change the sound that you have. Let's go ahead and save this, close it. And now we have a sound cue file that we can play. You can also play from here. And then in order to use it, you simply insert it into the level by left clicking, hold and drag and insert the sound cue file into your map. Now, just like for the sound wave file right now, it'll play everywhere. So if I go ahead and enable the settings, it will play from the from everywhere. It doesn't matter where you are, it'll play the same exact volume. Let me go ahead and turn this off for a second. So let's go ahead and adjust it. So it only plays from that specific source. So let's position it because this is going to come right from here. And the first thing we want to do is we want to adjust attenuation. So with it selected, let's go into the panel, into the details panel and enable override attenuation. As soon as you do, we'll have a sphere of influence where the sound is going to get played from. So this is actually by default, the inner circle right here. This is a hundred volume, a hundred percent volume of the sound. It's actually pretty good for uh, the sound effect for the telephone. Let's go ahead and play. So we're going to hear it and then it's going to fade out. So we can adjust the inner radius. Let's adjust it maybe a little bit more. And then we also want to adjust the fall off distance. The fall off distance is pretty large. Let me turn this off for a second because it's going to continue playing on the loop. Let's go to the top view and it's easier to see from top. And we can adjust the volume of this by just the fall off distance by just lowering that number down. So once you leave that room, Maybe from here, this is the room that uh, you would enter. This is where you're going to begin to hear the sound. If you want it a little bit more, you're going to just extend that. Now, you do also have attenuation shape. This is very important because uh, depending on the sound, especially when we get to the background noise, the room tone, you may want to have a specific shape of the sound that covers a specific area. So you have sphere, then you have a capsule. Now let me go to a side view so you can see better. So you have, here's a sphere, you have capsule, you have box, which is perfect for a room, and you have a cone. We're not going to use a cone, and in this case, for the telephone, sphere works pretty good. Now let me go back to perspective, and now 
Here we will be able to hear the sound as we walk into the hallway. So let's go ahead and play. So from here we won't be able to hear any sound, uh, but when we enter this fall off distance, we'll hear it. And as we get closer, it'll get louder until we get to the source. So this sound that we have is now done. It will play forever on the loop until we do something with it. Maybe we trigger it to stop if you press a button. Uh, that's more of entering into a blueprint stage of setups. But as far as the sound goes, for a individual effect coming from a specific source, that's all you need to do. You need to create a sound cue file, use a sound wave that you've imported, adjust properties for it, add any nodes that you would want to modulate and mix between to change that specific sound, or maybe mix between different sounds. Save it and then use that inside your level. And then once it's inserted inside your level, control the properties for it by adjusting attenuation if you need to come from a specific source and then have a fade out uh, effect. And of course, specialization, which is enabled by default, which will give you the left and the right ear 3D effect coming from the source. For the next step is having an ambient background noise for room tone. This is going to get played everywhere. There's not going to be a specific source and we need that sound to play an even volume, no 3D effect, and it always has to be on no matter where you are within the environment. You can have as many of these to mix between, like if you have a room tone that's different from the other room tone, you would just repeat the same steps that I'm about to cover. But we're just going to basically have one single room tone for this entire environment. So we need to create a new sound cue file. So I'm going to right click inside empty space, go to audio and create a new sound cue. And I'm going to name this one underscore room tone. And let me get rid of the new in the beginning. Now it's an empty file. Let's open this up and drag our room tone right inside the editor. Again, we're not going to mix this or, or do any of the sound notes to it. We're just simply going to connect output right into the main output. And here's what it's going to sound like. And then let's select the sound wave file and I want to have it to loop forever. Let's save it. And now we're done with it. Then we need to insert it into our map. So the location of this does not matter where you insert it because we're going to define uh, the area of effect or more of uh, the, the sphere or the box shape where it's going to play when the player is inside of it. So of course, I don't want it to play everywhere in the entire world. I just want to define the location, the space where it will play. So again, by default, right now, it will play everywhere no matter where you are inside the world. And if you have one type of environment, uh, this may work. But let's say you have uh, outside, inside, you want to control where that that tone is getting played. So we actually want to go ahead and control it. So let's go ahead and make sure it's selected and then go to details panel. The first thing we need to do is we want to enable override attenuation. Now that kind of tells you that, you know, it has a source where it's going to get played from. And it kind of is true. Uh, but we need controls for it to be, uh, we want to control the attenuation shape. So I don't want it to have a sphere. So I'm going to go ahead and change it to a box. So it kind of, uh, let me go to top view. So it has a box shape. So we can go ahead and uh, define the shape of that. Uh, so we can surround the environment where it will play. So here you have extents. So I'm going to go ahead and start adjusting it and start controlling it. Now you also have fall off. This is where the sound is going to begin to fall off in order to kind of, you know, uh, begin to fade out into something else or fade out to stop completely. Right now, let's go ahead and uh, we want to define the extents of the volume itself. So forget about the fall off for the moment. You want to control where the sound gets played at the 100% volume. So we need to adjust the extents. So let's go ahead and this is uh, the third value is the height. So we need to be inside view. So let's adjust the height first to cover the height of the hallway or of the, the entire rooms right about there. We can also move. Then let's adjust the other values and let's go back to top view. And you just basically control the box of where it is played. Now we want to control the fall off unless you want to have the fall off, uh, you know, that big. In my case, I don't. 
I'm going to just make it a lot smaller, something like that. Eventually you would have maybe a couple of these volumes that could be, you know, in one room, you have one room tone that's background noise, and then you have a little bit of overlap between the two. So you have, once you leave one room, you enter another, you hear a little bit of a fade out and then fade in from the other sound cue. So I do want to have a little bit of a fall off distance. And then you just continue to adjust this so it can surround whatever area for your environment that you would want. So let me just make it right about there. And let me just extend it all the way in the back. Let's say I, I want all these, this entire hallway, all the rooms to cover within this one sound. Right about there. So you can see that the interior box right here, that's 100% volume and that's what I want. And then of course, check inside view. So the height is also, you know, takes up everything that you would want. So let's make it taller. Let's go back to perspective. So now it will play as, as long as you are inside this uh, selected volume, this yellow outline, uh, this is post-process volume, so ignore that one. As long as you're inside this volume, the sound will play. When you leave, it will no longer play. Like I said, again, uh, you do not need to enable attenuation if you only have, let's say, outside, and you only have this one sound gets played everywhere, and there's no other ambient sound in the background, and that's all you want. You do not need to enable or control any of these values, just let it play everywhere. But for us, we want to control just the interior. Let me go ahead and enable it so we can hear it. Make sure we disable spatialization because we don't want to have the left and the right ear be able to hear it from the source. We want to disable this so we hear it everywhere and we don't have to be next to the source to hear it. So it's going to play everywhere in the left and the right equally. If you don't, we have to be a little closer to it. And the phone is going to keep ringing. You can hear it. You know, if I'm turning my left ear, my right ear, like uh, it's changing from one to the other and we don't want that effect to take place. We want to go ahead and let me select it. Uh, again, if you can't see it, you can just search for ambient, select the one that you're working with right here. And you need to go ahead and disable specialization because we want to hear it equally in both ears and not have to hear it from left to the right, you know, depending on the source of the sound. And again, if you leave the sound, it's going to fade out very briefly and then you no longer hear it. But once you enter it, you'll hear it. Let me go ahead and turn this off. So now we have a background room tone that's going to get played everywhere equally as you walk around. And it's the same type of environment, same location. So you should be able to hear that sound everywhere you are until you leave this volume, this box. And like I said, again, you can mix and match different, uh, different volumes depending on the environment location. So you have one fades out and then fades into another. And this is how you set up background ambient environment sound for your location, for your environment. Now, if you are serious and you want to take your skill to the next level, and learn how to use Unreal Engine 5 to create environments with, then I have two in-depth courses for you. UE5 Fundamentals Volume 1, that will teach you everything you need to know to get started to create environments and to light them with UE5, and UE5 Retro Office Project, which will take you through of constructing an environment with included set of static meshes that are provided for you within the course that'll take you to another level from beginner to intermediate user on how to create environments and how to light them. Both of these courses are now available for you to download and watch, learn, and to create with.